quick question. When was the last time you had a checkup? Think about it. Why do we even get checkups? To make sure everything inside is working as it should, right? Well, guess what? Our ocean needs a checkup too. Sounds crazy. I know. I know. Ocean checkup. What am I on about? Hi. I'm Vishvesh Mugarkar, 10 years old. And let me tell you a story. I was recently reading about the UN's 17 global goals for sustainable development. Especially global goal number 13, climate action, caught my attention. As, let's face it, climate change is the big issue right now. That night, I had the strangest dream of all time. I was on this beautiful beach enjoying the most peaceful family time with my parents and sister. But the ocean, it wasn't its usual vibrant self. It was kind of sick. It felt like one giant glass of lemon juice. Sour, acidic, maybe even had a stomachache from it. Just like I get sometimes when I eat a lot of junk. There came various creatures who could talk and even had names. Shelly the snail, Sheldon the shellfish, Cutie the clam. They were all struggling. Their shells were thin, weak, dissolving. They were practically crying because they couldn't build their homes properly. And it wasn't just them. The beautiful coral reefs, the tiny plankton, even the fish. Starfish, squid, octopus, everyone was suffering. We're falling apart like dominoes, cried a big fish. It's all your fault, humans. You caused this acidity. Now you only find us a solution. Help us, Vishwesh. Save us. Save us. Save us. Oh, God. What was that? I woke up with a jolt. Scratching my head. Ocean acidity. Wait a minute. That's ocean acidification. I had read about this yesterday. Yes. Ocean acidification is one of the major consequences of climate change. Let's try to understand a bit more about it. So, what is climate change? Climate change refers to long-term shifts in temperatures and weather patterns. These shifts can be natural due to changes in the sun's activities or large volcanic eruptions. But since the 1800s, human activities have been the main driver of climate change, mainly due to burning of fossil fuels like coal, oil, and gas. You know what? I'll explain it with a simple analogy. By the way, I'm a foodie at heart, so a lot of my analogies are related to food. Just caution. You might expect some yummy examples to come. So, yes. Pressure cooker. How many of you have seen pressure cookers in the kitchen and household? Come on, everyone, hands up. Great, great, great. Almost everyone, right? Well, imagine the earth is like a giant pressure cooker. The sun shines on it and warms it like the LPG or induction coil under the cooker. The air around the earth acts like a lid, trapping some of the heat inside. This is called the greenhouse effect. And it's good because it's essential for life on earth. But the problem is we're adding extra heat to the cooker by deforestation and burning of fossil fuels, which releases gases called carbon dioxide and methane which are like extra heat trapped inside. And just like a pressure cooker can explode if it gets too hot, our earth can have big problems if it warms up too much. Those problems are nothing but climate change. For example, stronger storms like a sudden burst of steam when you open the cooker too quickly, melting ice from glaciers and ocean trouble. The ocean soaks up extra heat or carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, acting like a carbon sink. It absorbs around one-third of the carbon dioxide 
released in various activities, making it much harder for some animals to survive. This is called ocean acidification. For understanding ocean acidification, let's first understand what's an acid and what's an alkali. Acids are often things that taste sour, like lemons or vinegar. Alkali, or bases as they call, are often things that are soapy or slippery. To measure the extent of acidity, scientists use a special scale called the pH scale. This scale ranges from 0 to 14, acting like an imaginary seesaw that tells you how much something is like a lemon, acidic, or like soap, basic. In the middle of the seesaw, we have the number 7. It's like pure water, perfectly balanced. Now, coming back to our ocean. When the ocean absorbs extra carbon dioxide, it changes its chemistry a little, lowering the pH a bit and making it slightly more acidic. If we only produced a small amount of carbon, the ocean could adjust. But we're producing a huge amount and the critters that live underwater just can't keep up. During the course of my research, I found that the average global ocean pH has decreased by about 0.1 units. This is equal to a roughly 30% increase in acidity. Big time question. How to combat ocean acidity? Well, the answer is simple. O A E, Ocean Alkalinity Enhancement. Ocean alkalinity enhancement is like adding special ingredients to the ocean to help balance it out. These ingredients are natural substances found in rocks like limestone from sedimentary rocks, olivine from igneous rocks, and magnesite from metamorphic rocks. We can add them as a salty liquid, that's a brine, or a fine powder. Sounds easy, right? Like just sprinkling some salt? Well, not exactly. It's more like baking a cake. You have to be very careful with the amounts. Too much of these special ingredients are just as bad for the ocean as too little. That's why scientists have to be super smart about this. They need to understand the whole ocean environment, the effect of pollution and climate change and exactly how much acid is already there. The first step is checking the acidity levels and then choosing the right ingredients from those special rocks. Now, how do we do this? Well, simple. Abracadabra! Midas touch! Midas, the Marine Integrated Dynamic Alkalinity Stabilizer. M-I-D-A-S. Midas works by mimicking how rocks naturally help the ocean. How? Imagine watching a movie in super slow motion. That's how rocks normally help the ocean. Over thousands of years, they slowly dissolve and release special ingredients called alkaline minerals. These minerals are like antacid agents that help balance out the ocean's chemistry. Meanwhile, Midas is like fast forwarding that movie, quickly adding those special ingredients to the ocean, those cleaning agents, you know, and making it much less acidic. And of course, making it absorb more carbon dioxide, which in turn is helping the whole planet. Now, let's examine the te technical components of the Midas system. Mineral storage, a huge container filled with alkaline minerals like lime shore, Grinder, a powerful blender that crushes these minerals into a super fine powder. This helps them dissolve much faster. Mixing chamber, a huge mixing bowl where all of these minerals are mixed with the seawater. Now this is where things get real interesting. Sprinkler system, pipes and nozzles that spray the treated water back into the ocean. This is where the real magic happens. The alkaline minerals dissolve and make the ocean less acidic. Last, but certainly not least, the power source. Solar panels 
and maybe even little windmills on top. So that Midas uses clean, green energy. How Midas works? Simply put, Midas first scoops up seawater, grinds the minerals into a fine powder, mixes those minerals with the seawater, and then sprays that now treated water back into the ocean. But here's where Midas gets extra special. It's not just a simple sprinkler. Midas is dynamic, which means that it can adjust its function based on what's going on in the ocean. It constantly checks the water, like a doctor checking the patient's temperature. If the ocean needs more medicine in one area, Midas can add more there. If the currents are strong, Midas can adjust where it sprays to make sure all of it spreads out evenly. To conclude, I would like to say that the ocean isn't merely a resource. It's the lifeblood of our planet. If we allow it to become irreversibly acidic, what part of the web of life will remain untouched? What will become of us? That's a famous quote by Robert Pilant. The ocean stores the heart, inspires the imagination, and brings eternal joy to the soul. If we allow the ocean's heart to grow weak, its inspiration to fade, and its joy to turn to sorrow, what will become of our own souls? What will become of our own souls? What will become of our own souls? souls?